What's up, everybody? How are y'all doing tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a good time tonight. And just uh, welcome, everyone. Just FYI, I can't hear your mics, but I can see your videos on there. That way, everyone can hear me really good. But I'm going to open up the chat in just a second here. So familiarize yourself with that if you've never used Zoom. And anytime you have questions, you just leave them for me in the chat. And I'll go ahead and leave a little message for you so you can find it. All right. Sweet. All right, y'all. Very good. Well, welcome to Painting with a Twist, Twist at Home. My name is Tyler. I will be your painting instructor tonight. They also like to refer to me as the paint doctor. <laughs> and the reason they like to call me that or gave me that sweet nickname is because I can help you fix anything, all right? So, you know, if you have a little uh-oh moment tonight, a little happy accident during the middle of the painting, no worries, I've got you covered. And that's what that chat is all about there. So. Let's see, what's up, hello. <laughs> yes, I can't, sorry, I can't hear your mics, but if you do have a question, I can unmute you for that question if, if you know the chat's not working out for you there, so no worries. But the only reason I have everyone muted is because if anyone else talks while I'm talking, it'll take over my instructions there. So that's the whole point of that. But like I said, I've got you anytime you have questions. So while I'm waiting for everyone to join in on the class here, it looks like we've almost got all of our painters. Let's go ahead and talk about our supplies today, and then we can jump into things here. And so, first off, make sure you've got a surface to paint on. I'm going to be painting on a 16 by 20 canvas today, but you can paint on anything you want. And I know a lot of us got the twist at home kits, so you could be painting on canvas like me, you could be painting on a wood palette, you know, whatever you want. Um, if you are using your own supplies, be creative. You could paint on cardboard, you can paint on rocks. If you've ever heard of 719 rocks, that's a really fun thing to do. So if you've got some really cool flat rocks you wanna paint on, go for it, it works awesome. So paint on anything you'd like, but make sure you got something to paint on. Also make sure you've got some painting clothes on, something you don't mind getting a little paint on there. Otherwise, if you don't have painting clothes on and you do get paint on your clothes, you could be leaving here. <laughs> very nice, cheers to y'all. You could be you know, leaving with your very own brand new painting outfit. So make sure you got a, you know, outfit on, you don't mind getting a little paint on. And then I already saw some of y'all raising your glasses. Cheers to you. That is also important to have your favorite beverage of choice, or as we like to call it in the studio, liquid inspiration. <laughs> so make sure you have your favorite liquid inspiration, you know, it'll make you feel inspired in no time and it really helps you get into that relaxing zen process of the painting, you know what I'm saying? Also, don't be afraid to have, you know, your favorite snack and music playing. I will not have any music playing so that you can hear my instructions really good. But, you know, if you've painted with us in the studio before, you know, we like to bump up the jams while we are painting, you know, so we can shake it while we make it. <laughs> so I highly encourage you to have your favorite music playing in the background. As long as you can hear me good, then you are solid there. That way you've got some good painting jams. I know when I'm painting, anytime I'm painting, I've got to have music. It just helps me flow into things, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's the other thing you might wanna have going. Also, let's talk about our supplies here. Make sure you've got a cup of paint water, all right? At home, I just recycle and use a perfect, I just use like a pickle jar, that kind of thing. I got my little painting with a twist cup here. When you've got your little paint water cup out there, I would recommend maybe possibly putting it on the opposite side of where your beverage is. This way, you do not mistake your paint water for your wine tonight. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often I've seen people grab their paint water and take a sip of that, thinking it was their wine, and they ain't got a sweet surprise. <laughs> so be warned, all right? If you drink a little paint water, though, the good news is our paint, I know for sure, is non-toxic. If you're not using our paint, I have no idea. I can't tell you. <laughs> but if you do drink a little paint water, it will not hurt you. It's non-toxic, gluten-free, wheat-free, dairy-free, non-GMO. So there you go, all right? I just don't recommend it. It's going to taste bad, all right? And it's not fermented, so fair warning. And then also make sure you've got uh, some paper towels, a little paint rag, you know, whatever you want to use at home. Sometimes I'll just even rip up a whole old T-shirt 
and that makes great paint towels as well. So whatever you got, whatever you got, make sure you got something to clean your brush. And then let's talk about our brushes. We're going to use about three brushes tonight, three brushes, or you can get away with two brushes. It's depending on what you got. All right. So we'll talk about them. And we like to name our brushes. It's so much more fun that way. So you can name your brushes, whatever you want. But if you want to name them, when I'm naming them, I'll tell you what that's going to be. So our big brush tonight, I'm going to be using a big flat brush. You just need one big flat brush. We're going to call this guy Big Daddy. <laughs> or you can call him Sideshow Bob. That's our other nickname for him. Bob is short for Big Old Brush. So make sure you got a sideshow bob or a big daddy brush for you there. And then also make sure you've got a medium brush. I'm going to have a medium flat brush here. And you might be using this brush. They're very similar. So very similar. Yes. Do you have a question there? I see you've got a round and a little round. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, for the for the medium brush, you can have a round or a flat. I debated, you know, either one works great. So either one's perfect there. Great question. Oh, yes. And your medium brush, whether it's round or flat, we're going to name this one Slim Jim or Slim Shady. Say, what's popping, Slim? What's popping? <laughs> and then our small brush. I think you all have all got a little detail brush. Any little round brush is great for those details there. And I will be naming my little brush, Little Mama. Say, hey, Little Mama. <laughs> so we'll take good care of our brushes, you know, because there are little friends tonight. We want to think of our brushes as like happy little fish. So let your happy little fish take a dip in the pool. And go ahead. Whoops, I dropped a brush. Go ahead and drop all of your brushes in your cup of water. This is where you want your brushes when you're not using them. If you leave them on the table, unfortunately, you're going to look down at that table in about 10 minutes, and you're going to have a very sad, dry, crusty, dead fish friend. You don't want that, all right? <laughs> so when you're done with your brushes, I recommend leaving them in that cup, all right? And by the way, can everyone hear me good so far? So far, so good. All right, I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Yes, fantastic. Awesome, okay. And then what else do we need here? Oh, of course, we need our paints, our paints. Now, on your paint palette there, keep in mind, try not to let your colors, you know, get too mixed together there, especially if you've got, if you've got one of our take-it-home kits, because we've got limited colors there, so try to keep them a little bit separate there. But you can pre-pour them, and I always leave a little in those little to-go cups you've got there for later, just in case you need more. So here's all our colors. We've got black, we've got white. And from there, you could get really creative. You know, if you have other colors at home or you're using your own kits, use whatever you want, you know? But I've got a uh, black, I've got white, and then I've got a magenta red. It's really just a dark pink magenta. You can use spirit fingers when you say it. Then we've got a light blue here or fluorescent blue. And then we've got a dark blue or the fancy name for that one is phthalo blue. So that's what we'll be using tonight. And then I do recommend for our final supplies, make sure you've got an extra little piece of paper or cardboard or just an extra plate here that's empty. The reason you want this is because you might need a little tester sheet is what I call it, or a place to mix colors. So I always like to have a little extra piece of paper, paper plate, cardboard, whatever you got, just a scrap, something you're gonna throw away that you can just doodle on and practice things and that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend a little tester sheet. And then besides that, I think we are officially ready to get this painting party started. <laughs> and like I said, this is a painting party at home, okay? So keep that at the forefront of your mind tonight. That's why painting with a twist, our fun little phrase for you is, this is fun art, not fine art. <laughs> So let that phrase simmer on your brain a little bit, okay? And as a little reminder, every once in a while, when I feel like it's, you know, notice anyone thinking too loud, anything like that, I'm going to yell out, what's up, my twisters, or party on, twisters. <laughs> That's your new title that you just got when you joined this class tonight, okay? So when you hear twisters, I need to get a little weird, a little rowdy at home, and give me a burst of energy, all right? All you got to do is be like, woohoo, cheers. Or my personal favorite is, caca. <laughs> so whatever sound inspires you, all right? And if you have your favorite liquid inspiration with you at home tonight, 
Don't be afraid to take a sip of that beverage every time I yell twisters. I'm not encouraging at all. I'm just giving you options. Everybody likes options. <laughs> all right, y'all. Very good, very good. <laughs> no, get weird. Weird is good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And again, my name is Tyler. If you've ever painted with me before, give me a little shout out in the chat. It's always cool to know that I painted with you before. That's really fun uh, for me. And um, otherwise, again, my name is Tyler. They also call me the paint doctor or they call me man bun for obvious reasons. <laughs> so if you need help, that's what you type in the chat. Tyler, man bun, paint doctor, doctor man bun, whatever you need, all right? And I will not leave you hanging, okay? So if at any point in time during the painting, you're working away and then your allergies kick in. Achoo, dang it. <laughs> whatever it is, you just ask me for help and I've got you, all right? Okay, y'all, let's get this painting party started. So first off, I like to get you a little loosey-goosey. Spin those wrists for me. Wake them up, wake them up a little bit. Shake it out a little bit, shake it out. Or you can do your best. Wacky inflatable arm tube impersonation. <laughs> That's how you want to paint tonight. Embrace the motion of the ocean, all right? And um, before you paint on your surface, introduce yourself, you know? Touch it real fast. Say, hello. Say, I'm going to make you beautiful. I promise. I promise. <laughs> or you could just say, hey, I'm going to paint your face. <laughs> I have a small point to this. I'm not just being weird. Although, I do like to do that. I wanted you to notice your surface is very dry. These surfaces, whether you're painting on canvas or wood, do act like a dry sponge. It's gonna absorb that paint so fast. So pretend you're painting on a dry sponge tonight. And remember what the golden rule of painting is. I always say it is, mo paint, mo better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That just means use a lot of paint on your brush. You're gonna be happy if you do. So let's go ahead and start off by grabbing your biggest brush. Remember, we're calling this one Sideshow Bob or Big Daddy. So get Sideshow Bob, tap him on the side there. And then give it a little tap on your paper towel just to take off any drippiness. Very good, very good. Now, like I said, we got to use a lot of paint at the beginning. So here's how we want to start. We're going to dunk the entire brush in some white paint. Let's get lots of white paint on there. I want you to make it a saucy brush. You better make it saucy. <laughs> If you have any bristles showing, that's too many bristles. You got to cover them up. So again, lots of white, nice and saucy. Nice and saucy. And then once you've got lots of white on there, get a little bit of red on the corner of the brush like that. Just a little bit. And that's probably more than I need. So all you're going to do is go, just kidding. I don't want that. <laughs> and just wipe off that little bit of red on the edge of your plate there until that corner of your brush turns kind of bubble gum. There we go. You can see I've got now a little bubble gum on the corner and lots of white glob down there. Healthy amount of paint. All right. Now I like to use a lot of hand measurements. It helps us figure out where things are going to go. So we got to get a little handsy with the canvas. Okay. I've got one version of this painting over here. And if I broke it up, it's like, it's almost like three hand widths. So that's how we'll do it. So I'm going to go to the bottom here. One hand width up from the bottom wrist to fingertip and just go boop, right where your fingertips at there. Use those sound effects. And you can use either side of the brush, the pink side, the white side, either side, just go boop. <laughs> sound effects help. That's all I'm saying, all right? Use them to your advantage. Once you've got that little dot, that little pink dot there, then let me get this a little closer actually, here we go. Once we got our little pink dot there, and it's hard to see right now, go ahead to the other side, do the same thing. One hand width up, or you can just hold your brush across like this and go boop, put your other little pink blob there. I use a lot of technical terms, try to keep up. We got two boops. <laughs> now we're gonna connect them with a whoop, whoop, all the way across. There you go. <laughs> and just let those colors mix together. Just go back and forth a couple times and get a nice thick line coming across the middle of that canvas there, or a little below the middle, I mean. Nice thick stripe of some light pink. Could be fairly light. Now, if you see my canvas, you can see I've got another painting underneath here. We recycle ours, so who knows? There could be like 10 paintings underneath here for all I know. Um, that's why you're seeing a lot of texture on mine. So you've got a clean surface there. This will be a little smoother. But make sure it does feel like it's melting on the canvas at this point. It should feel like butter on hot toast or cream cheese on a bagel. 
Otherwise, you're not using enough paints, all right? So make sure you use that paints, like Paula Dean uses butter. <laughs> Let's see, I see some questions here. Repaint white. Yes, great question. I just saw some questions in the chat there. Okay, so. Sorry, I froze. If you missed any instructions, let me know. For those of you painting on wood boards, you'll do the same steps that we're doing on the canvas here. The only difference I could say is if you want your um, knots to show out, like all the character of the wood, you can water down your paint a little bit. Uh, be careful there because it can drip. So if you need to, you could even lay it flat on your table if you want to water down the paint. But otherwise, on the wood boards, we pretty much keep it exactly the same as the canvas. Every once in a while for the backgrounds, we will water down the paint a little bit, but that's only if you're trying to show the character of the wood. So what does that mean? I'll show you one here. That just means if you have, <clears throat> if you have all these little knots and you want to show them out a little bit, you can water down the paint when you start working into that sky and water. And the more watered down it is, the more you'll see the knots. So that's just up to you. And the more thick you go with the paint, the more it's going to cover up the wood texture there. So it's kind of just a personal preference when you're playing around with those wood boards. So you know, depends on how much of that character you want to show. Great question, though. Oh, and then I saw someone ask if you can record this. Let me double check here. We should. Okay, cool. Yeah, we are recording this right now, actually. And you can record it if you want. Um, as far as I know, that is okay. But we are going to record this and put this on YouTube for just a couple days. So if you miss it or you want to come back and revisit it or rewatch it, anything like that, as soon as we're done, they are going to be uploading this on YouTube probably like tomorrow or so. And it'll be up for like a good, I think, three days before they delete it. That way you can revisit that video anytime you need. And I will post in just a minute what our YouTube channel is. But I'll go and show you real quick here. It's Piwat Colorado Springs, painting with a twist. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do now. We still want to have that light pink on our brush here. So let's see. Oh yes, I see you have the board. Do you need to pre-paint it white? Nope, if you have the boards, you do not have to pre-paint the whole board white. You can definitely just paint straight on top of that natural wood. So let's keep the pink that's on our brush here. In fact, let's get a little more and let's go a little darker. Let's get some more white. Don't clean your brush. Just dunk it in some more white, nice and saucy, nice and saucy. And then let's get a little more red this time. And same thing, I'm gonna tap the corner of the red so it turns pink. This time I'm gonna get a little bit more red than last time, so it's gonna get a little darker, just a little bit. All right. Now this is where we gotta get a little crazy with our brush strokes. We're gonna come across this line. We wanna bring it up a little bit higher. If you make a letter C with your hand, about like that, that's probably how high you wanna go. Now, don't make this a perfect line though. You want it to be choppy, so I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to overlap this line a little too. So I'm going to do what I call little sweeping X's. And the top of my line is going to be choppy like this. It's not going to be a perfect line. So sweeping X's. And we want to be real messy here. You can even blot it like this. Either way. I'm going to go a little darker with my pink so you can see it a little better. But yours can be a little lighter at this point. Sweeping X's here. Overlap it. This is all about texture. So play around. You can do blotting. You can do little sweeping X's. You can really play around with it. This is all about getting funky and getting some texture. So don't be afraid to get weird with it. Try all kinds of ways of brushing that paint around. But make sure you're using plenty of paints and just know the more you brush it, the more it's gonna turn into one solid color. The less you brush it, the more streakiness you're gonna see. So play around with that depending on what you want. But don't overstroke it. Now, again, I'll show you up close there because it's pretty light at this point. Very streaky, very textured, very funky. So the more texture, the better. The more texture, the better. And once I get into those darker colors, you'll be able to see it a little easier. I'll add a little bit more to mine just so you can see it a little better. I'll go a little darker. You can add more red if you want to go darker. Don't be afraid of that. But play around with texture here. If you have music playing in the background right now while you're painting, this is a great time to shake it while you make it. <laughs> Wiggle while you work. You know what I'm saying. Get it, my twisters. Kaka. <laughs> That's right. We want to get in touch with that inner artist tonight. All right. Get lost in those brush strokes. Everyone's going to have a different approach to this. You know, everyone's going to have their own style. So let yourself have your own style. That's the beautiful thing here. Don't worry about it looking like mine. 
let it have its own little personality. So see that edge? It's real funky, real choppy there. That's the idea. That's the idea there. All right. Once we've got our funky, choppy little edge, let's see. <laughs> That's what she said. Yes. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Okay. So we want to create this little beam of light coming up. Let me show you the example here. My little paint sheet. See that little beam of light coming up from the middle? We're going to create that next. And that little beam of light is going to be just like we did here where we want a lot of texture on there. So don't be afraid to fray your brush. Now, if you are using the big flat brush and yours is like really smooth and it doesn't have a lot of texture, at some point in time, if you want to, you could switch to this brush because he's a lot more textured if you have this brush. And this works great too. But either way, don't be afraid to mash your brush on the table to give him a bad hair day because that can be great for creating that texture. So don't worry, Bob can handle it. <laughs> so here's what we'll do. Now, I'm just going to keep the pink on my brush, not going to clean my brush. Keep it a dirty brush. And then dunk your whole brush in white paint. Just get lots of white on there. You'll still have a little pink underneath, but just get white to start. And don't even clean the brush. This little stream coming up the middle is gonna be roughly as wide as your hand if all your fingers are closed like that. So roughly that wide. But remember, you want choppy edges just like this, so not a perfect line. So go to about the middle, get yourself a rough idea there so you know how big it's gonna go. And then you're gonna start coming up and just blotting or doing little sweeping X's. Again, this is all about texture. And you're gonna go all the way to the top. Now you might wanna get a hand and hang on to the back of your easel. You can hear mine shaking around. These things like to shake it while you make it, all right? <laughs> they will wiggle while you work. So do get a firm grip if you need to on the back of your easel when you're blotting like this, creating that little texture. Once we get it coming up through the middle here, you wanna bring it down also into those pinks so that it mixes a little bit and blends along that edge. So let those colors overlap. I'm just doing a blotting technique or you can do a little sweeping X's. Whatever you feel like is gonna give you the most texture there. This sky is so fun. It's all about texture, getting funky, getting weird with it. You got this. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Just blob it like you mean it. Just blob it like it's hot. <laughs> all right. Let me know if you have questions. I'm checking the chat. Very good. Okay. Now remember, you're blotting down into this so they mix along this edge. You can see that it's a little lighter pink in the middle there. That's a good thing. We're going to even go brighter in a minute, but that's where we're starting. All right. Now, once we got this, before we could go brighter in the middle, we want to get a little deeper pinks along just the edges there. So once you've got your light pink stream there, get a little bit of red and white. Keep the white that's on your brush. Add more if you need to. Just get a little more red so it's slightly darker pink. And same thing, just blot along the edges here, just along the edges of all of our pink. I'm just going to lightly blot all along the edges, and that'll give it a little bit of a darker glow, and the middle is going to stay a little lighter. Just get a little bit more red and blot into it. If you get a lot of red like that, I got way too much red, too much red. Easy fix. You just wipe off your brush, get pure white, and you just take some white and blot into that. It's always fun to kind of mess things up and show you how easy it is to just come back and go back into it, so don't be afraid of that. Let it happen. Just let it happen. And there we go. We just want to get those edges a little more funky, a little more frayed, and a little darker. So now you can kind of see it's almost like a little ramp or like a letter L here on the edges. A little ramp there. So make sure it's kind of darker along these edges and just a little lighter in the middle. And we'll go even brighter in the middle in a second. It's really up to you how dark you want your pinks. The more red you add, the darker it will get. So that is up to you, but keep all the edges funky and frayed. The more frayed, the better. More messy, more better. You got this, Twisters. Woo! <laughs> Get lost in those brush strokes. That's what it's all about. Let me know if you have questions. This is a really fun sky. I really love this painting. It's a great painting. I've taught this one a couple times. Not sure how many times, honestly. I love this painting though, it's beautiful. I love those paintings that have that, that very cool, kind of what I'd call like a very galactic looking sky. So that's the cool thing about these, these very galactic skies. It's all about texture and you can almost make pretty much a very abstract sky. 
And once we've got all this abstract texture on there, when we splatter our stars on top, it's going to create this really cool galaxy effect. And it's going to, all this texture is going to turn into what I call space dust. So that's kind of essentially what we're trying to create right now is our texture that will become the space dust, which is really fun. Make sure you use plenty of paints. Remember, the more you use, the easier you're going to have mixing and blending those colors along that edge when you're blobbing. If the paint's too dry when you're trying to kind of mix things and blend, it's kind of like going down a water slide with one drop of water on it. It's going to be very painful. <laughs> so make sure you're always using plenty of paint, unless I say otherwise, because the more you use, the easier things mix. So any questions before we get into the next part here? All right, you're looking ready. If I ever get a little ahead of you, just let me know, let me know. We always do the background a little faster than the details because you want to have more time on the details, you know, because you cover up a lot of that background. So once you are done with this phase of our sky here, we need to get our brush clean. Bob's been a dirty brush, get him clean. Paint little circles on the bottom of your cup. <laughs> Make a little whirlpool. That's the best way to get this brush clean. You got to paint little circles on the bottom. Make contact. Make a little whirlpool. And then give it a tap on the side there and on your paper towel. Sometimes you'll see a little paint like this that he likes to hang out where the bristles meet the metal there. If that's happening, you just give, wipe it off really good on your paper towel and give it a second rinse. And that's usually all it takes is two rinse cycles and you're good. All right, and then try to squeeze out a little bit of that water. It's okay to have some water on your brush, but if it's really drippy, you'll wanna try to tap some of that out. Okay. So now we get to start adding a little bit more flavor to our sky. We're going to start flavor flavoring that sky with purples, blues, and then we'll get into some deeper colors after that. So what we want to do once we rinse this off, before we get into those other colors, we want to add a little bit of brightness coming down the middle here. So let's grab just white, just white, glob it on nice and saucy, plenty of white on there, cover up those bristles. And when you do this, you want to do less because the more you brush it, the more it's going to blend into one solid shape. The less you brush it, the more bright this is going to be. So you're just going to start at the bottom middle here and you're going to come right up through the middle and just create a white stream and make it real funky. So again, a little sweeping X's or blotting and just create a little bit of the smokiness coming right through the middle here. You can play around both types of brush strokes. We want to just create a little bit of brightness and the less you do, the more bright it's going to be and the less it's going to turn pink on you. But the more you blot along the edges, the more you'll have that kind of blend into those, you know, darker shades of pink there. So play around with it a little bit until you get it the way you like it. But that's the idea there. Very blobby, very messy, mo messy, mo better. <laughs> you got this. Lots of texture. Lots of texture. And by the way, we are starting to have some very small classes in the studio. So if you ever want to paint with us in the studio, we are slowly opening up. And we've got all our little precautions. We got masks and we got gloves for you and all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. But we're going to be doing a lot of these virtual classes as well with take home kits. So don't worry, we will keep it coming so that you can paint with us from home and shake it while you make it. <laughs> you got this. Any questions about our funky little textures there? It's all about texture here. And remember, the more you brush things, the more it eventually just blends into the same solid color there. So brush it less, keep it messy. <laughs> texture, texture. We'll get into some more smooth brush strokes at the bottom when we do that water. So now that we've got our white through the middle here, we can start adding our other colors. So I'm not gonna fully clean off my brush, I'm just going to take that brush, keep it a dirty brush, and just kind of lightly wipe it off on your paper towel there. Lightly wipe it off. But you can keep it a dirty brush. You do not have to rinse it this time. And if you are painting with friends or family at home, you know, one thing I'll encourage you is painting on your neighbor is encouraged. <laughs> So I'll try not to get you in too much trouble, but if you catch your neighbor really focused, you know, maybe they've got a tongue sticking out, they're like, eh. maybe they've got some cool veins pulsing in their forehead. This is usually your grand opportunity for a little face painting, a little arm tattoo. They probably won't notice till much later. 
<laughs> or until they walk into the restroom and look in the mirror. So have fun with that. I'll try not to get you in too much trouble, <laughs> but have fun with that. All right, so again, just wipe off your brush. Don't worry about cleaning it. He can stay a dirty brush. And then what we'll do here is we're gonna make a little purple. So I'm keeping what's on there. I'm gonna now dunk one side of my brush in red, one side in blue. Look at that. And I still have a little white left over because I just wiped off the brush. I didn't fully clean it there. And now you might want to go to an empty spot on your plate or if you have your extra mixing plate, this is a good time to mix it up. So lightly mix it up there and make sure you get a shade of purple that you like. If you want a little brighter, add a little bit more white. If it doesn't look grapey enough, add more red. If it doesn't look you know, dark enough, you could add a little more blue. So play around with it. But equal parts will get you there to a nice little shade of purple. Oh, light blue. Great question. Dark or light blue? I use the light blue. I use the light blue. Yes. Or the fluorescent blue. So I use the light red and the light blue. Equal parts of both. And I had a little white still on my brush. So if it gets too dark, add a little more white. And it's all up to you what shade of purple you like. If you use more red, it's going to be more of like what I'd call grapey or like a plum or a, a wine color. More blue in there is going to make more of a periwinkle purple. So, you know, it just depends on the shade of purple that you like. All right. <laughs> but once you've got a shade of purple that you are feeling, make sure you're feeling it. <laughs> Then you can start blobbing along the edges, okay? And you want to overlap that pink before it gets too dry. But again, not much blending here. It's really all about texture. So start along this edge, hold on to that canvas or wood palette, and start a little bit outside of your pink and then lightly blot into it. And as you do this, it'll start lightly mixing along that edge and give you more of that nice little texture. And that's what we want to do there. So lightly blot it in a circular motion, just blobbing it like you mean it. If you got music playing, just blob it to the beat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's all we're gonna do. If you run out of that purple, mix a little more purple up. Don't be afraid if it's exactly the same shade. It'll look good to have different shades of purple on here. That's why we're letting them mix with the pinks as well, because that's gonna give us more little shades of that color. And don't be afraid to overlap, you know, a good amount of that pink. It's up to you how much you wanna overlap it. But if you really like purple, and you know, that's your favorite color, you can make it rain purple, all right? You can cover up a good portion of that pink. <laughs> so just make it the way you like it. Remember, this is your painting, and you don't have to make a direct copy of what I'm doing. You're making your own version. So anytime you're feeling creative, you want to add your own little flair to it, you go for it. We encourage creativity here. So let it happen. Let it happen. Maybe later on you want to put a little alien spacecraft in your sky. I'm not going to stop you. You go for it. I've seen all kinds of stuff. <laughs> My favorite thing to paint on scenes that have water in them, because we've got a little water at the bottom of this painting, are Loch Ness monsters. I like to just put like a big tentacle arm coming out of the water. <laughs> so like I said, be as creative as you want. You can really make it your own. And most importantly, just have fun getting lost in those brush strokes. And like I said, if you've got music, shake it while you make it, wiggle while you work. Just express yourselves on that canvas tonight. <laughs> You got this, Twisters. Woo! <laughs> All right, very good, very good. Let me know if you have questions on your purples. You can see how that's making our sky really pop now. It's looking really nice. I'm a big fan of purple. It's a fantastic color. So once we got purples, we will start getting a little bit more into our sky, getting a little darker now. So again, I won't even fully rinse the brush. You don't have to clean it. Just wipe it off really good on your napkin, your table, your neighbor. Again, whatever's closest. And this time, again, didn't clean my brush. Just wiped it off. I'm going to grab the light blue, the light fluorescent blue with what's already on my brush there. And same thing. We'll start now a little outside the purple, blot a little bit, and then let that run into the edges of the purple so that you get a nice little mix there. And you don't have to do a lot of this color. We're gonna get a lot darker after this. And you'll get more shades of purple the further into those pinks you go with that blue there. So don't be afraid of that. But remember, make your edges really funky. Don't make any of these edges like perfect curves. You can see mine are real choppy there, real textured. If you look at it up close, it is very messy. 
So mo messi, mo better. You want your sky to be like a very abstract painting. Very abstract. I love skies like this. They're so fun to paint. But do hang on to those easels. They will run away from you very quickly. Just working our way out with those colors, slowly getting a little darker now. And you can see how I'm overlapping those purples and even pinks a little bit if you want to bring some blue into that. You can. But keep it messy. And you can let your brush kind of run out of paint when you're doing this blotting technique. Don't be afraid to let it just run out of paint. It'll get even more misty that way. And the more you lightly tap it, the more you'll see those edges get a little fuzzy and a little hazy. That's the idea there. Mo messy, mo better. So here's a fun little game. I like to play on these virtual classes. So um, I like to find out who is our furthest away painter. Last time I had some people painting from Arkansas, I think Nebraska. We had people from Arizona. So if you are painting uh, outside of Colorado Springs, let me know. And just so you know, our studio is located off of Constitution and Powers. We are the East Colorado Springs Studio. We're also connected to the Lakewood Studio in Denver. So I do know we have painters from Lakewood painting with us tonight and from Colorado Springs, I'm assuming. But if we have anyone from further away, let me know. I'm always curious. Let's do it. And you know, this blue edge here can be as funky as you want it. You can see how, again, it's not a perfect curved line. It's very funky, very funky. Funky, lumpy, and bumpy. That's the name of the game with this guy. <laughs> funky, lumpy, and bumpy. As long as you're keeping it funky, lumpy, and bumpy, you are doing it right. Painting with us from Littleton. Thanks for painting with us. That's so cool. I love that all over Colorado tonight. Okay, my painters, looking good. The final color I'm gonna use in the sky before I get a little darker is gonna be just the dark blue by itself. So just in case, this time I will finally rinse the brush. You can wipe it off a little first if it's got a lot of paint on there and then give them a good rinse in the bottom of that cup. Let's get Bob clean, let's get Bob clean. And then wipe it off on that paper towel again. And really just want to try to get some of that white off of the brush, but it doesn't have to be totally clean. We are going to use dark blue next. So I will be loading my brush up with dark blue. Nice and dark there. And I will fill in the rest of the sky. Same thing, I'll start on the edges here and I will blot into those blues and let it overlap a good portion of them. It's up to you how much of them you want to cover up. And again, keep these edges really weird. We are going to add in a little bit of black into these corners. The sponge, you can even play around with the sponge to get this texture. And you can get really creative with creating texture, so whatever works for you. Uh-oh. Oh, I see I just lost sound for a little bit there. Sorry about that. I know that does happen every once in a while. We have a little blip, but they're usually pretty quick. So if I have a little blip and you miss an instruction, let me know. I'm, I'm quite a jabber though. I talk a lot, you know, sometimes I'm just talking. <laughs> but um, if you missed that last step, we're just using dark blue and we are filling in the rest of those corners of the sky there, starting out in the corners and then lightly working our way into those blues. And remember, the more you fray your brush and the lighter you are kind of with that touch, the more you'll get those cool little textures. And use whatever you want for this. Play around with different brushes in case you missed that part. 
and you could even use a sponge if you had one at home. You can honestly even use a crumpled up paper towel. I've seen people do this as well and it does work for texture. You can take a clean paper towel, roll it up in a ball, get it kind of crunchy, and that can work really good for creating texture too. So, you know, feel free to play around with stuff as we're working tonight. It's all about just playing around with it until you get that effect that you want. But you can't go wrong. The sky is always different. Every time you go outside, it's doing something different. So do keep that in mind, you know. Let your sky have its own little personality up there. We're doing good. We're moving and grooving. Getting lost in those brush strokes. That's what it's all about. If you ever feel nervous, you know, just take a deep breath or a sip of some liquid courage. <laughs> And you'll be fine, all right? Now, all we got is one more little color we can add into our sky, and I'm not gonna do a lot of this, but a little bit. Anywhere that you have put the blues, we're gonna put a little bit of black. Now, you don't wanna cover up all the blue, but you can cover up a lot of it. And since black is such a strong color, it's the strongest color you got on your palette. of those blues or however much you want to. You can even have random little blotches that kind of separate from the group as your brush starts to run out of paint. But again, it's just texture, so it's all about whatever works for you to create the most texture. But by getting these little dark areas in the sky, and I'm gonna get it real close so you can see that a little better. There's one side, I've done it on the left here, if you wanna see that. And you can see the blues underneath, but it's still covering up a good portion of it. This is gonna make our sky really pop against our stars and all of that stuff. Really gives us that nighttime feel there. So flavor, flavor that sky a little more. And then we're gonna reflect all these colors into the water after this. That'd be really weird with these brush strokes and this blotting technique. The weirder, the better. If you have questions, leave them for me in that chat. I'm gonna check the chat in just a second here as we're finishing up our sky. And then once we get the sky, we're gonna jump down to that water and start playing around with that pretty soon. So that's about all I'm doing for my sky there. And you know, painting is like a ping pong match. It's like a little give and take game, a little back and forth, you know, a little wax on, wax off. So don't be afraid to come back to an area. If you're like, oh, I covered up all my purple. I want more purple in there. I'm happy with the black and blue, but man, I really wish I had more purple. You can rinse the brush, come back, add more purple. Don't be afraid to do that. Just make sure you rinse the black off really good if you do come back and revisit a spot. And again, everyone does it a little different. Here's my example so far. You can see here is another one from in the studio. So they're both slightly different there. Everyone's got a slightly different take there just to kind of show you. Everyone has their own version. I like to really make it very smoky, really big in the middle there. But if you want to take a little bit away, you can come back with some purples and you can cut into that. So I'll let y'all play around with that for a minute and then we will jump into the water after this. Let me know if you have questions as we're going. Oh yes, another fun thing to do is take pictures while you work. It's, a, it's an artist trick as well to take little pictures. It can help you see it from a fresh perspective and kind of see the full extent of what you've got going on that canvas there. It's also fun to look back at your painting and see the progress as you work. So don't be afraid to take little progress pics as you go. And if you post anything from your evening painting with us, I would love to see it. Send it to us on our Facebook or Insta and we will repost you and brag about you. So we would love to see what you're doing tonight. And I'll go ahead and put that in here just in case you're looking for us anywhere. Our studio is gonna be Twist Colorado Springs. You can find us on the Insta, Facebook, Google, all that good stuff. At Twist Colorado Springs, we have a, I think we have a Snapchat as well. Or if you post anything, you can also we can also find you if you do hashtag Twist at home. So just some fun stuff to think about as we're working tonight. Let me know if you have questions as you're getting lost in those brush strokes. Keep smushing it real good. Keep smushing it like you mean it. <laughs> 
And just FYI, you know, that's all we're doing tonight. We're just smushing a little paint around, smushing it real good, and then just seeing what happens. <laughs> and I promise, the more paint you put on there, the more you're gonna see it come together. Painting is kind of like a layering process. It's very much like baking a cake, building a house, lasagna, onions. You get the idea, anything with layers. <laughs> So just remember, the more layers we put on there, the more you're going to see it come together. So have faith in the process. Have faith in those layers. No, it's going to come together. You got this, Twisters. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any questions, so let's talk about the water. We're going to work on the water next. The water is really fun. It's going to be all the same colors you're using up here. But instead of these kind of very messy brush strokes, we're going to be doing kind of horizontal brush strokes back and forth. So we're going to change it up a little bit. And so we are actually going to be splattering paint on here too for the stars. But we're going to do that after the water because the stars are going to reflect into the water. So that's the kind of cool thing about that. We'll kind of splatter the whole canvas after we get the water on there. So the important thing is before you move on to your water, making sure you clean off that brush. Bob has been a very dirty brush. We must get him clean. <laughs> so paint little circles on the bottom of that cup. Really makes you rinse it off good. And most importantly, make sure you get the black paint, especially out of the brush and the blue. That way when we paint the pink in the water, it'll stay nice and bright for us. So make sure you get that rinsed off really good. Sometimes you gotta rinse it a couple times. Don't be afraid of that. You can always just test it when you wipe it off on that paper towel and see if you got all the paint off good. And if not, give it a second little rinse there. And then you're ready to go. But that's all we got to do first is just get Bob nice and clean because we're going to be starting off with pinks and whites and we want them to stay nice and bright and not turn kind of gray on us. So do make sure you rinse that good. Oh yeah, and I think I see some people doing this, but if you want to, feel free to paint the sides of your canvas while you work. This is kind of a fun thing to do. It's called a gallery wrap. And you can do this on the wood palettes too, so it's up to you. You can either wrap things as you go, or you can paint it one solid color at the end of your choice. So kind of a fun thing to think about as you're going. It does frame it nicely if you paint those edges. And again, that's called a gallery wrap if you want to impress your friends. <laughs> so now for the water, what we're going to do is load our brush up again. Lots of white, lots of white. and then a corner of our brush in some red. This time, this time, don't be afraid to get a good amount of red on there. Look at my brush, you can see I've got a good amount. And this time we're not gonna wipe it off. We're actually gonna let it mix on the canvas. This is gonna be fun because it'll make this kind of streaky effect and we'll get more shades of pink. Now, the less you brush it, the more shades of pink you'll get. The more you brush it, the more it's gonna blend into one solid shade of pink. So it just depends on what you want there. But again, with lots of white, glob it on nice and saucy there. You can see it's like dripping off my brush. And then also uh, a little bit of red on the corner there, a good amount. So nice and saucy. Once it's nice and saucy, we're gonna come down the middle of our water here and we're gonna make some horizontal brush strokes. Start with longer brush strokes and the further down you go, have them get shorter and shorter brush strokes. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start right below my sky here, big brush strokes, almost going all the way across, and then some shorter ones, maybe a few longer ones. But overall, they're gradually getting a little bit shorter the further down that canvas I go. And you can go all the way to the bottom or you can stop a little before the bottom. It's almost what I call like a little zigzag tornado there. And again, I'm gonna go a little darker with my red so you can see my canvas a little better. Yours can be a little lighter, that's okay. But again, notice that some lines are longer, some are shorter, and it makes this funky little kind of horizontal zigzag little tornado effect coming down the middle of the canvas. The messier, the better. And remember, the more you brush it, the more it's gonna blend into one color, the less you brush it, the more you're gonna see that streakiness. And you can definitely paint over the edge of your sky. Don't be afraid to touch your sky there. You can see I've already painted over it a little bit. So loose and streaky here, shake it while you make it, and just go for it. You got this, I believe in you. Just get lost in those brush strokes. One with the brush tonight. You are that brush. You got this. Now, when you're painting water, I encourage sound effects. <laughs> so, you know, you know what water sounds like. If it's a really windy day, then it might be like, whoosh, you know, but if it's just a little windy, And 
That's the idea there. I'll hold it real close. Very good, very good. Make sure you're still using plenty of paints because remember it's gonna blend a lot better with those other colors while it is wet. If it dries, it's like going down a dry water slide. It's very painful. <laughs> so don't do that. Lots of paint, lots of paint, nice and saucy. Let me know if you have questions. I'm gonna check the chat out. And remember, anytime you have a question, let me know. If you need me to pause on something, I can come back, revisit it anytime you need. I've even got a little tester canvas over here. I can read, show you stuff if you ever need it. So let me know, let me know. I'm happy to help you. Remember the paint doctor's here. I won't leave you hanging. I will help you with anything you need. So if you have questions, and I can even unmute you, and you can hold your canvas up to the or to the screen so I can see real good, and that kind of thing. So if you ever have a little trouble spot, you just tell me. I got you. The cool thing about painting, it's very forgiving. Oh, yes, I see you holding it up. Let me unmute you there. And you can paint over anything when it's dry. That's one thing I love about acrylics. So let's see here. Let's see, Brittany. Okay, hold on here. I think I can unmute. How do I? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to unmute y'all so I can hear you. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Good. We'll figure it out. Oh, I can hear you now. <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, hi. You're fucking amazing. We're obsessed with you. <laughs> Thank you. We, we, I answered the question for her. She wasn't paying attention. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Did you, what's that? It looks like you painted white on your sides of your, your middle ground here, and I just, she answered, it's fine. She answered it. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Nope. No white. Just in the middle there. Just white and pink in the middle. Perfect. Thank but you. But this is. Yep, that's all still just my blank canvas. Got it. Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If y'all need anything else, let me know, okay? I wasn't listening. Okay, thanks. Need a lot Am more, I muted but again? Uh, <laughs> we are not muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I don't want to say anything. I have regret. We're still not muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still not muted. Because <laughs> we'd have it's a little fine. red I mic by our name. There we go. <laughs> I got it. All right, cool. So again, make sure your pink is still wet there. We will go into the next color here. And so we'll get a little bit of purple, not a lot, but keep the white and red on your brush. You don't have to clean it. And again, let's dunk red on one side and light blue on the other. So red, white, and blue on our brush. And then we'll mix that together again. Make a nice shade of purple that you like, just like we did with the sky up there. Nice little shade of purple. And it doesn't have to match your sky purple, just, you know, in the ballpark, close-ish is good. Because remember, it's going to mix with the pinks anyways, it'll give you different shades of purple. So that's perfect. Now, once you got that purple, same thing here. We're going to follow the shape that we've created. If you want to change your shape at all, you just cut into it with those purples. But otherwise, we're just going to go on the outer edges, and you just kind of very lightly brush in. And I'm not going to do a lot, just a little bit here. But remember, some brush strokes longer, some shorter. Just start outside of that pink and just kind of lift off the brush as you go. Just dust that canvas, just caress it. <laughs> Don't press down hard, you got this. Just start on the outside and then lightly dust into it. And it, like I said, it's up to you how much of that pink you wanna cover up. The cool thing about painting though, is you can come back and paint over anything when it's dry. That's what I love about acrylic paint. So if you ever have a little happy accident and you wanna go back and revisit a spot, once the paint's dry, you can literally come back and paint over any color you want. That's what's wonderful about acrylic paint. So keep that in mind. Super duper forgiving. And there we go. It's getting nice and streaky there. Now I'll show you a cool little trick too. If you're trying to blend these edges a little bit more, you can, while the paint's wet, you got two options. You can rinse your brush off, tap it a little bit dry, and with a clean paintbrush, there's no paint on here, I could come back and just dust along the edge where the pink and the purple meet. And with no paint on my brush, this can help make things a little more fuzzy, a little more hazy, and just kind of lightly blend those edges where the pinks and purples overlap. 
So that's one little trick. Another little trick is if you're covering up all your pink, you can just rinse the brush, start again with white and red, and go back to the middle with white and red, and same thing. And don't overbrush it there. Streakiness is good. You can see how messy mine is up close. Mo messy, mo better. Once we've got our purples, we're going to just keep moving along like we did with the sky and add the next shade, which will be the light blue. There's not a lot of purple. Again, unless you really like that purple and you want to make it rain purple, then make it rain, all right? <laughs> Your water can be more purples instead of blues if you want. So that's really just your personal preference. But once you got some purple on there, I will again just wipe off my brush. Again, don't have to clean it. Just keep it a dirty brush. And we will dunk it in blue, the light blue, the light blue. So lots of light blue or as we call it, fluorescent blue. <laughs> so lots of blue on there. And then same thing, we'll start outside of our purple and lightly brush into it. And again, some brush strokes are going to be longer, some are going to be shorter. Really play around with it. Try not to make your brush strokes all the same length. That's just what our brains like to do naturally. They like to put things in a little pattern. So sometimes we got to play with our brain a little bit so that it doesn't do that. So if you start noticing all your lines the same length, throw in a few longer lines in there or even a few shorter ones. And that'll help break up that space for you. Now, as we're using this blue here, you can even start getting a few brush strokes going off the page like this. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to add more in just a little bit, but don't be afraid to have a little bit of that happening. So we'll overpower that with our darker blue to blend things. So really keep it loose, keep it messy. Don't think about it too much. If you catch yourself ever overthinking, there is a cure for overthinking. There's a couple cures. Number one, you can take a deep breath. Or if that doesn't work and you're still overthinking, just keep drinking, all right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Take a sip of wine and you'll be fine, all right? But like I said, just let yourself get lost in those brush strokes. I've had a lot of people tell me that painting to them is like meditation because when you're painting, you really do kind of forget about everything going on in that noggin and all you're thinking about is smushing those brush strokes around, you know, smushing that paint around. So let that happen. It's very therapeutic, very relaxing because your mind just clears, because you get so focused in the paint there and what you're doing. That's why I love painting. Very therapeutic. Like I said, if you don't believe me, I bet you forgot about anything you were thinking about. And that's the sign that it's working. <laughs> Painting's like a beautiful little escape. So let yourself get lost in your little landscape you're creating tonight. <laughs> All right. I don't see any questions, so let's talk about the next part here. All we're going to do is just get dark blue and fill in the rest of our water. So for that, I will want to go ahead and rinse off the brush a little bit. So I'll get a little rinse there. Doesn't have to be super clean, just a little bit. And then I'll just be taking that dark blue, the darkest blue you got. And I'll fill in the rest of my water now with dark blue. We'll come back after this and we'll get some deeper shadows. The same thing, you can cover up about half of that light blue with the dark blue there so that our water gets some nice deep shadows. And keep making those water sound effects if that's working for you. Whoosh. Now don't worry if you have a little more movement. Let's say your brush strokes have a little more wiggle. Maybe you were really shaking it while you're making it. That's great. That just means it's a windier day. Nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes the water's got more ripples in it because of the wind. So if you've got a little more rippliness, don't be afraid of that. That's a cool thing. And you can even emphasize that if you want it to be a little more ripply. You can kind of purposefully shake your brush a little bit while you're making it.
Now, if you ever see texture on your canvas, and by texture, I mean like, like let's say you, you put a little brush stroke out and you see little white dots appearing in the brush stroke. That is your canvas or your wood palette telling you it's a very thirsty surface. <laughs> so load up that brush because your surface will tell you when it gets dry or if you're seeing dryness in those brush strokes, it'll tell you that you need more paint. So don't be afraid to listen to the call of the canvas there, whatever it's telling you. You should never have to press down very hard. It should just naturally glide for you. Again, kind of like butter on hot toast or cream cheese on a bagel. Gotcha. So I see. What you might want to do, what's your big brush? Will you hold up your big one? That's the big brush? Very good. Okay. So you're just going to have to make it really saucy. Really glob it on good there. Yeah, I will say I don't, I, w I didn't know what brushes were provided for this because I'm not the person that, that uh, does that, that end of things. But if you do have smaller brushes, you'll be able to get more details, which is a really good thing, especially when you get into the details. But for the big areas like this, you'll definitely have to glob it on and then really smooth it out, really big brush strokes there. And I will slow down for now and let you catch up because I can see a lot of us, you know, have those smaller brushes there. So thanks for telling me that. That is good to know. And if you are using the round brush, again, besides just really globbing it on good there and using a lot of paint when you're doing the texture up top and that kind of thing, same thing. It's just a lot of fray in the brush, mashing it. Don't be afraid to give the brush a bad hair day because we can always reshape it by rolling it in the paint there. So don't be afraid of that. And we're pretty much done with the big areas. From here on out, we're actually going to be using the smaller brushes. So once you get that background on there, you are solid. And it is about seven o'clock. So we've been painting for about an hour now. We're doing perfect on the timing there. That gives us a good hour to work on mountains and happy little trees there. <laughs> so that's what's happening next. But take your time. No rush, y'all, no rush. And like I said, I remember the background usually is the quickest steps. And then after that, things kind of slow down a little bit to give you a little more time on the details. Oh, one more little touch we're going to add to the water here. Our final little touch. And for this, you don't have to fully clean your brush. You can keep dark blue on there, but you'll get a little bit of black. So a little bit of black, just like we did in the sky there. Still have dark blue. I'll get a little bit of black, not a lot. Now, one thing I want to point out real quick on the example one here. There are some shadows underneath the mountains. We're not adding those shadows. We're just going to add a little bit of some darker lines just along the edges here, but try not to put any underneath where the mountains are going to go. These are going to start more in the middle of your water and then work your way down or a little above the middle and then work your way down. And see there's little gaps too, little gaps. So you don't have to have a lot of this, but you're just going to add a few little shadows in the water. So that's all I'm going to do next. I'm just going to be pulling a few random little brush strokes with blue and black here. Mostly so you can see that black coming out and just pulling in some little shadows along the edges, just like that. And see, I've left little gaps and they're kind of mixing with those blues. So it's up to you how much of that you want. Just a little goes a long ways. Just a little bit. Just a few little shadowy ripples down here. We're going to add more later, but that's all we want for now. That's all we want. Just a little something, something. Just a little something. <laughs> and remember, if you're ever having trouble blending stuff, you can always rinse your brush. And if it's a if it's a little area and you don't have a lot of blending to do, you can even switch to a smaller brush for that. And then you just go and dust along the edge. So if your black isn't blending the way you want, rinse it off a little bit, and then just dust along the edge where the black is touching the blue and that can help a little bit. But be careful with that black, because it will.
And let me know if you have questions. Remember, I won't leave you hanging. Paint doctors here. No insurance, no copay needed for tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna check the chat. Let me know if you got any more questions here. Looking good. All right. Awesome. I hope you're feeling in touch with your inner artist tonight. If you're not there yet, don't worry. You will get there. And again, just a reminder, like I was saying before, no one's going to do it the same way, which is awesome. That's the beauty of it. It's kind of like, um, think about, uh, you know, it's like thumbprints. We've all got our own unique thumbprint. You know, we've all got our own unique handwriting. So no one's going to smoosh the paint the same way. Think about your favorite artists out there. Everyone knows like Van Gogh, Picasso, people like that, Monet. We've all heard of these guys. You know, if you had Van Gogh and Monet and Picasso paint the same painting like we are, I guarantee you they would all have a very different approach to that painting. You know, you could tell they maybe did a similar scene, but all look very different in their own way. So, <laughs> and Bob Ross. Yes, I love Bob Ross. He's the best. Happy little trees. <laughs> I still watch Bob Ross on Netflix. I am not going to lie. If you're a Bob Ross fan and you've been looking for his videos, he is on Netflix. It's fantastic. <laughs> we actually have a few paintings up here where we kind of do similar technique. He's using oil paints, but we use, you know, acrylic paint. But I have a few paintings up here I like to teach where I actually use a palette knife to create similar mountain effects that he likes to make, which is really fun. If you've ever painted with a palette knife, whew, it's a good time. It's a messy time, but a good time. <laughs> well, let me know if you have questions on the sky or the water. After this, we're gonna be splattering paints on here, which is so much fun. <laughs> splattering paint is one of my favorite things to do. It is a little messy, but it's very satisfying. And it will make our whole background just kind of come together. It's beautiful. So we're going to get into some paint splatter after we got those backgrounds on there. OK. So. I'm going to go grab some more white paint. I need a little more white paint. And let y'all finish up that watery area there. Then we're going to splatter some paint. So for paint splatter, we're going to use your biggest brush that you got. And we will use some watery white paint. So a little suggestion. Once you finish, put your brushes. Remember when you're done with them, drop them in your cup of water so they're happy little fish. and then. If you want to, you can always um, get some fresh paint water. You might want to refresh your paint water for this step so that's a little more clear. I know my paint water right now is like a muddy, um, funky blue color there. So you might want to refresh your paint water for the next step because we're going to be watering down some paint and we want it to be nice and bright. And the other thing I might suggest is if you have that extra mixing plate, this will be good for that. Or if you have another um, paint water cup, you could even get a separate cup to water down your paint and just put like a tiny bit of water at the bottom of that cup. And that would also work great for this next step there. So my little suggestions, once you finish your sky there, I will be right back. I'm going to pause my mic and I'm going to grab my supplies. I just got to grab more white paint and then I will show you how to splatter some stars and we're going to make it rain on that canvas. <laughs> I'll be right back.
All right, I am back. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna make it rain stars on our canvas. So let me know if you have questions on those final little steps there. Otherwise, I'll start talking about the next part. And this is one of my favorite things to do in painting, very satisfying. Um, it does get a Let's take it somewhere where you don't mind getting a little paint splatter. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to use our bigger brush for this. Or you can, our biggest, oop, looks like I blipped for a second there. We want to use your biggest brush you're using tonight. So the biggest one you have will be great. And then we want to water down some white paint. So you got two options. You can either grab your extra little plate there and you can grab a scoop of white, drop it on your plate, just one little scoop, and then you can start adding that clean water to it and stirring it in. Now you need the paint to be as watery as if it's milk or like almost as watery as the water in your cup. It's gotta be very, very runny. So you need a spot that you can make a little mess on. Or if you don't wanna use a plate, cause that can get messy, you can get a cup and just put a little bit of water in it, just like a knuckles worth of water or even less, just a tiny bit, a knuckle or a knuckle or a half a knuckle there, just a little bit of water at the bottom of a cup. And then you can add a big scoop of white to that and stir it in. We do need white for other steps. So, you know, make sure you're conserving that white a little bit, but either way it works great for watering down the paint. So whatever works for you, but just make sure you get a nice consistency. Again, it needs to be very runny, kind of like milk. Stir it in real good. Make sure you stir the paint really good into that water. Again, nice and runny. If you're using a little mixing plate, you should be able to tilt your plate slanted a little bit and see it run. It should run really fast. Again, like a drop of water, not like molasses, you know, or honey. You know, honey is just like just dragging along there. So make sure it's very runny because it won't give you the effect you want if it's not super runny. Once we've got our milky, runny, white, we are almost ready to splatter some stars on here. Now for the splattering, you'll wanna grab also maybe an extra paper towel, wouldn't hurt. Or if you've got an extra one next to you there, go ahead and grab it. And here's what I'm gonna do with that extra paper towel. I'm gonna take it and first off, since this paint is so runny in your cup or on your plate there, your brush is gonna be very drippy. So to prevent from getting a nice drip going down your whole arm and your canvas there, there's a good little trick. So what you wanna do is you wanna take that brush, first off, when you get it out of your runny paint, tap it off on the side of the cup or on your extra plate there. Just tap it off until it stops dripping. And that's step number one, tap it off till it stops dripping. Next, you'll want to take your extra paper towel like this and you'll want to wrap it around the handle. Just wrap it around that handle like so. If you wrap it around the handle, then any of that drippiness coming down won't drip all over your arm and your hands and make a big mess on you. This also prevents it from dripping down the handle because what will happen is the, that paint will run down the handle and it'll drip onto your canvas as well. So that's my next step. Wrap a paper towel around it. And then remember, anytime you reload it with that watery paint, you gotta tap it off really good until it stops dripping. Otherwise, it's gonna drip everywhere. And then finally, you get to splatter stars. So watch how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna bring my uh, screen a little closer here. You don't have to be very far away from the canvas. You don't have to be like across the room. You can be just like an inch away from it, really close. And then what you're doing is you're just pulling back the bristles lightly and fraying the brush. Now make sure your brush handle is pointing away from the canvas. So see when I'm doing it, it's at an angle like this and the handle's pointing away from my canvas. That also prevents drips from getting on your canvas. And then all I do making my sky really pop, especially in those dark areas. It's really bringing it to life there. Beautiful. And that's what you want. And then 
Don't be afraid to put a little on the water because it's reflecting. I like to put some on the water. I think it looks very cool down here. And remember to tap off that brush really good when you do this. If you have an old toothbrush at home that you're not using, this also works great for splattery paint. And you do the same method. But those really stiff brushes like that work really good. Now let's say you get a little drip somewhere. I got a few drips. So I'm going to show you how you can blend those back into your canvas if that happens. And the cool thing about the drips, if they happen, is you can turn it into what I call space dust. So here I've got some drips on the left side of my canvas. So let me play around with those. All you got to do is take your finger and tap it in a circular motion like this. I can now turn those little drips into little clouds or what I call space dust. And then if it looks too messy, you get a little bit more of that splatter paint and splatter over that spot again and that will blend it. So that's a great little trick. Anytime you get a little drip, you just tap it in a circular motion and you make little dust clouds there, a little space dust. And it looks really cool. So that's a nice little trick there. But you can see how much those stars really bring out that sky. They really help make it pop, give it that little something, something, that little more uh that we're looking for. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's so fun. You can have a lot of stars or just a couple. You can make it rain or just do a few. That is really up to your personal preference there. And again, make sure you've got them in the water a little bit if you want them there, because I do think that looks really cool as well. If you have questions on the splattering, let me know, let me know. Otherwise, have fun with it, make it rain, and do watch out for your neighbor. And remember, every time you reload it, you got to tap it off until it stops dripping. Otherwise, that's when you're going to get those big old drips there. So sometimes it feels like there's not really anything on the brush, but then when you start fraying it, you see those little dots appear. If you want bigger dots, hold it farther away from the canvas. If you want smaller dots, be real close. The closer you are, the littler they're going to be. The further you are, the bigger they're going to get there. And you can do this everywhere. It can go in the middle of your sky as well, on top of the pink, in the middle of the water, really anywhere. I like to put it everywhere. You know, I just really love it. It's my favorite thing. I love splattering paint. So much fun. Just gives it that nice little sparkle. That little something, something. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions on that. So much fun. It just really brings out the character of that texture in your sky that we were working on there. And it just really helps kind of blend everything, you know? It just brings it all together. And it's so much fun to splatter paint. <laughs> You got to get your hands a little dirty, but it's already watered down. So it's going to wash off your skin really easy because it's a water-based paint already. So watering it down even more, it's just, it's going to wash off that skin real, real easy. No problem. So don't worry about getting a little on yourself there. Have fun with that. If you need some bigger stars, this is optional. But let's say you want a few big stars and they're all kind of small. You can use the back of your brush, the butt of the brush, and you can stamp bigger stars. So I'll show you what I mean. You can just use the back of that brush, no bristles on there. You see, I'm just using the back. And I could come in here and if I want some bigger stars, I could stamp some bigger ones. Now, if you do that, you just don't want to do a perfect um, little row of them. You, you got to do like odd numbers, little clusters of odd numbers. So if you need a few bigger stars, Feel free to use the back of the brush, but just make sure you don't put a perfect little rows and make a perfect little grid because that's what happens because our brains love to put things in patterns without us even realizing it. So that's my only recommendation. If you do some of these big stars like this, just do little clusters of odd numbers, like a little cluster of three, a little cluster of five, and space them really weird. Some are closer, some are further apart. That way they don't feel too uniform. And you can just kind of dot them wherever you feel like it. If you need some bigger ones, that's optional. Just showing you fun stuff to play around with. Let's see if anyone has questions. All right, doesn't look like it. Cool, cool. Soon we'll be getting into the mountain next. So it's about, it's seven, almost 7.20, it's about one minute till. And I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to paint our mountains and our little baby trees. 
a happy little baby trees there. So that's all we really got left essentially is those sweet mountains, those little baby trees. We are gonna add a few more reflections and highlights in the water as a final touch. So here is my little suggestion. Once you finish splattering your stars, we're gonna take a five minute break, a real short break here. The most important part about the break is to get the canvas dry, because remember it's a layering process. So here is my suggestion. As soon as you're done, put your brushes back in your cup of water. If you've got that extra plate with no paint on it there, you can just flap those wings and this will dry it really fast. It only takes you know a couple minutes to dry. Acrylic paint naturally dries very quickly. And depending on the surface you're painting on, it'll absorb that paint very quick, especially the wood palettes. So don't worry, it'll dry pretty quick. But if your paint is fairly thick, you can use a hair dryer if you have one at home and a hair dryer will dry it really fast in like 30 seconds to a minute tops if you use the hair dryer though don't hold it over one spot you want to go and move it around while you're doing it so it doesn't overheat one spot there but that also works good we use hair dryers in our studio all the time so either fan it or use a hair dryer also while we're taking our little five minute break here we'll come back at about 7 25 ish um make sure if you need a refill on your liquid inspiration, you get a refill. <laughs> if you need some more snacks, get some more snacks, use the restroom, that kind of thing. Stretch your legs, give your eyes a fresh perspective, kind of take a little step back from that beautiful background and check out your handiwork there. That's right. <laughs> Cheers. Nice job, my twisters. Give yourselves a hand on that background. Woo! <laughs> Whatever sound inspires you. But like I said, once you're done, take a little break, and most importantly, get that canvas dry for me, and then we'll jump back into it. And I will be right back, y'all. My mic is going to be muted, and then I will be right back. But like I said, if you have questions, leave them for me in that chat, and we'll jump back into it about 7.25, 7.30-ish.
All right, I am back, everybody. How did that dry time go? If you're wondering, is it dry? You can always check it. I see some thumbs up, awesome. And if you want to check it, just tap it lightly or give it some spirit fingers or jazz hands <laughs> and check it out. As long as it's mostly dry, like 90%, you are golden. Oh, those are looking nice. Beautiful job, Brittany. That looks awesome. Epic. Very nice. All right, Shaw. It's time for some epic mountains. I hope you're ready to be one with the mountain. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, now that we are officially done with drying it and what we like to call it here when we're drying our paintings, we call it drink and dry time. <laughs> so once we're done with our drink and dry time, we can officially jump back into our painting. So it's officially time to party on twisters. Ka -ka. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about those mountains. Mountains are so fun to paint. I love painting mountains. One of my favorites. I'm gonna use a little demo canvas here before we start and then we'll jump into it. So for now, don't worry about doing nothing yet. I just want you to watch me and then we'll go from there. Cause these mountains are gonna be a little different. So when we make mountains, I'm just gonna draw a few on this canvas, but don't do anything yet. Just give you an example. So first off, when you make mountains, do not make them perfectly straight triangles, you know? Um, that's the nice thing, honestly, about painting mountains is you don't need any straight lines or as I call them, sober lines. So it's all good. <laughs> so the reason why you don't want straight lines on the mountains is because two reasons. One, it will look very unnatural. And if you make them all straight, it looks like this. It's like, weren't, 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 weren't. And it looks like a chevron pattern. <laughs> you don't want that. They're too straight. They're too perfect. And plus, what do they call the mountains here? They call them the Rocky Mountains, not the perfectly straight triangular mountains. So emphasize the rockiness. What you also don't want to happen is you don't want your, uh, your mountains to turn into a heart monitor. I see this happen a lot where the mountains are like, beep, beep. <laughs> These mountains are barely surviving, okay? <laughs> so don't do either one of those. That's what you don't want to do, all right? <laughs> what you want to do is think of mountains as like very wide, lumpy, bumpy, funky triangles. So they're not very sharp angles, they're very wide and they've got a lot of jitters. So use those jitters. If you drink a lot of coffee like I do and you feel a little jittery today, you can use that to your advantage on this step, all right? Because you wanna shake it while you make it. So here's what they should look like. It's a little bit more like this wide triangles. It's gonna make them a lot more natural if you're kind of shaking it like so and then wiggling the brush, making very wide triangles getting lots of rocks in there. You can see how this looks much more natural than these straight line versions. So that's the idea. Lumpy, bumpy, wide triangles. Lumpy, bumpy, and most importantly, keep them funky, all right? <laughs> all right, so these mountains, we are gonna be blending a little bit of pink into them. So all we wanna do first is we want to draw just the tall shape of the mountains here. Now keep in mind, you wanna keep your mountains a little shorter because you can always grow them taller, but you don't wanna cover up all that beautiful sky you made there. So start them a little smaller and grow them as needed, but don't fill them in. So you can draw them out with your medium or your small brush. Whichever brush you wanna use, go ahead and grab that now. Give it a little tap on the side of the cup, tap it on from your paper towel there. And since I'm gonna use my medium brush, this one, remember his name is Slim Jim. So say, what's poppin' Slim? What's poppin'? <laughs> or if you're using your little brush, that's Little Mama. Say, hey, Little Mama. So we're gonna dunk it in some black paint, just black, just black paint. I know it's a little scary to use just black paint. We're gonna blend into this in just a little bit here. So load it up nice and saucy, lots of black paints on there. Don't be afraid of it. And then we'll start our mountains. Now, if you want to, you can practice a few mountains on your tester sheet. So that's why you have that little tester sheet. Practice a few little baby ones. Just get a feel for it. Make sure you like what's happening there. Once you're ready, we'll start making them. The tallest one is gonna be in the middle of our stream there. And you can put them where I'm putting them or you can change it up. Now that is totally up to you. So 
Once you're ready, take a deep breath if you need to, a sip of some liquid courage, and then just go for it. So I'm gonna start my mountains over here, just about halfway up into the pink there, and I'll start jittering. I'm gonna make my first little peak there, grab a little more black, maybe a little small peak next to it. And each time you feel like you're running low on paint, just grab a little bit more. I'm gonna dip down. Maybe I'll have another little peak down here. Then I'm gonna start working my way up to my tall peak. Nice and jittery there. You can have as many little peaks as you want. It's really up to you. And then I'll have maybe like two more after this here. Nice and jittery. Don't feel anything in yet though. Remember you don't have to have your mountain peaks where I have mine. You can put them anywhere you want. You can always make them a little taller as needed there. Come back, add some more jitters. Keep it loose. Shake it while you make it. You gotta wiggle while you work. <laughs> See if anyone has any questions. Nice. Williams family, y'all got a sweet setup outside. That looks beautiful out there. Way to use that natural light. That's my favorite way to paint as well. Paint nature in nature. That's the way to do it. Anyone have questions? Oh, using the chalk. Good call there. So I didn't know if anyone had any chalk, but that is a great point. I saw Brittany holding up her chalk there. If you have chalk at home, like chalk that you'd use on a chalkboard or sidewalk chalk. Oh, I love your plates and your cups, Timothy. Those are awesome. That is so sweet. That is epic. You've got like a whole themed party. Yes, I need those plates. Those are awesome. Where did you get those? Oh yes, um, sorry, I'm ADD here. <laughs> but yes, if you have chalk at home, you can draw your mountains with chalk. Chalk works like it does on a chalkboard and it does erase. So that's the cool thing about that. So don't be afraid to try that out if you want. And you can paint over chalk, which is awesome. It's a little tool we use up here. Um, so if you're feeling nervous to go in with the black paint, you can chalk out your mountains as well. And then you can erase it if you don't like it and do it again. So that's kind of nice. So that's a little trick there, if you've got it. And if you're trying to erase it, you just use like a wet paper towel, just a little water on it or something like that. And the paint, like I said, goes right over top of the chalk, which is awesome. So once we've got this, we're going to be blending into this a little bit. So make sure you've got a nice thick brush stroke. You can see how mine's real thick. Make it thicker than a snicker. All right. <laughs> Get a nice little thick stripe for the shape of your mountains here. because We're going to be blending into that a little bit while it's wet. All right, so nice and thick here. Make sure it's wet. Like I said, a really big brush stroke. If you wanna know how much, how thick it should be, I would say your knuckle. So that little part of your knuckle here, that's roughly an inch. So make sure your brush stroke is like a knuckle wide there. About a knuckle wide. Nice and thick with that paint. All right, now, once we've got our black paint on here, and we got a nice thick band of it, we want to get into the colors in the mountains. There's not a lot of colors, but there's a little bit. So we're gonna blend a little bit into our black with some pink, and you might get these kind of pinkish grays or even kind of like purpley gray tones in there, which is really fun. So that is what I'm gonna play around with next. So like I said, make sure you've got a nice thick stripe along here. It can be very messy, it does not need to be a perfect line. You can even kind of do little messy brush strokes like this if you want. So we're gonna be blending into that a little bit while it's wet. So once we've got our mountains kind of halfway filled in or a thick brush stroke, rinse off your brush really good. Use the same brush you're using there. Rinse it off really, really good. And once we've cleaned off our brush there, we'll keep using your middle brush, the middle child there. And we are going to mix a little pink and we're gonna fade pink into black and you're gonna get these cool pinkish grays. So I'll dunk my brush first in white, dunk it in red, and I'll lightly mix it 
This can be a little bit of a deeper pink if you want than what you used on your sky water, but close, you know, close, still one kind of a bubble gum pink. So white and red and make a little bubble gum pink there. It could be a little bit of a deeper shade, like I said, if you want, but pretty close to what you've got in the sky and the water. Once you've got that pink on there, you are gonna start by filling in the base of your mountain with a little pink here, kind of go over, going over that texture you had. And then you're gonna work your way up into the black paint. And as I work my way up into that black paint, it's gonna start catching and giving me some of those pinkish grays. Now, if you need to, you can even come back with black and work from the black area into this. So we're just creating this fun little texture there. Remember my other little trick I was showing you earlier, you can always rinse off the brush if you need to and just take a clean brush, start in the black area and you can brush down into the pink. And you can see this works really good if this paint's still wet to help blend it a little bit. And you can cover up most of that pink. You don't have to have that much showing through, but it's fun to have a little bit at the base of the mountains. It creates a little mist, a little fog. And your mountains don't have to stay perfectly black at the top. They can turn into different little shades of gray there. So that's what we're doing there, just smudging away. And you can see it creates this cool little mist at the base of the mountains there. And that's the idea. So that's all we're playing around with there. Nothing too specific here. Keep it loose, keep it messy, and make sure your mountains are mostly dark. We want them mostly black and gray, not too much pink. So if you got a lot of pink on there and you need to take a little bit away, we can take a little bit away. But make these brush strokes real messy along this edge here. Or maybe you didn't get enough pink. You want a little more. You can add a little more. So play around with that. But real messy. You can have definitely some just random little brush strokes of pink coming up into the mountains there. We'll add some snow into this in a little bit. But that is just a fun little thing to play around with if you want to there. Real messy. Mo messy, mo better. Feel the shape of those mountains. Just keep it loose. Remember, if you feel like you want it more fuzzy, rinse the brush and just dust it with a clean brush or start with black in the black area and just lightly dust it down into those pinks so you get those fun little shades there. Very loose here. It's all again kind of like our sky there, a lot of texture in these mountains, nothing too specific, just lots of texture. I'm going to show you my brush strokes up close. There you can see how messy they are now up close. From a distance, it looks like I did more. Up close, you can see they're not so blended. They're a little more messy, a little more streaky. Don't be afraid of that. That's fun. Let it happen. Let it happen. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Also, when you're painting, make sure you don't forget to breathe. You know, I've been told breathing is very important. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times I've been teaching a class and I'm like, don't forget to breathe. And then someone's like, oh, I wasn't breathing. <laughs> so don't forget. Surprisingly, I've actually had a few people pass out on me. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't do that. All right. My, uh, my wife is awesome at yoga. She can do amazing things I cannot do, but I like to try to attempt a little yoga with her every once in a while. And, and, um, you know, she has to remind me when I'm doing that to breathe because it is easy to get focused on what you're doing and forget to breathe. So don't turn blue on me. Keep breathing. All right. Keep breathing. And I've been teaching for about six years now. So and I've only seen two people pass out. So that's pretty good odds, you know. <laughs> and I will say both of those people that passed out, they were OK. We got them some water. They got back up and they finished those paintings. So, you know, it was still a good day. But just be careful, all right? Keep, keep breathing. <laughs> all right, I don't see any questions yet. So let's think about what we got going on now. We want to start adding in a little bit of some reflections into the water. We want our mountains to get a little bit dry, just a little bit, because we are going to be painting um, snow on top of these and a little bit of some trees, just a little bit. So. Once you get this little base coat on there, how about this? What we'll do is we'll do a quick dry, another little drink and dry here, just a quickie. And we want to get this paint a little bit dry. It does not need to be totally dry. So as soon as you're done getting your black kind of fading a little bit into your pinks there, go ahead and flap those wings a little bit. Get your extra plate and do a little bit of this action. It does not need to be 100% dry. Just get it a little bit dry there. That way our white snow will stay mostly white 
it's okay to get a little bit of gray in the snow because it can add some cool shadows. But overall, we do want the snow to stay pretty bright, so it really pops. So I'm going to be fanning this real quick. So as soon as you get those mountains on there, give them a little fan there, or use your hair dryer if you got one. But like I said, it does dry pretty fast naturally, so you'll be all right. Awesome. If you don't have questions, holla at the paint doctor. I will not leave you hanging. And by the way, while we're doing a little drying here, if yours is already dry and you're just waiting, if you want to check out the kind of art that I make on the side, I also paint my own personal paintings and I do murals and commission paintings and stuff like that. You can check it out. I do all kinds of stuff. I will put my Instagram up here for you if you want to check it out. And like I said, if anyone um, post your painting, or I've had a lot of people tag me in their stories and post their paintings. I will reshare that. I love to do that and brag about you and your sweet paintings. So let me know. But if you're looking for me and you want to see my personal art, Tyler Dixon murals, I'm going to put it in the chat there. T Y L E R D I X O N murals. So there you go. If you're looking for me. That works. Let me know if you have questions. And again, make sure you're getting it a little dry as soon as you're done. Well, hopefully that worked. <laughs> All right. So. Once we get this dry, we can start adding a little snow on there. Remember, it doesn't have to be totally dry. Just fan it for a good 30 seconds or so. Fan it good. Fan it good. It just uh... now it worked. <laughs> Sorry, someone. Oh, is there a is there an animal? I see a puppy. A cute puppy. I love dogs. That is awesome. He should put his little, oh, I see another puppy. Oh my gosh, y'all are the best. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so cute. Need a little paw print on one of those. <laughs> For those of you, oh, another little puppy. <laughs> For those of you with cute pets, I'm seeing some real cuties tonight. Uh, we do have a paint your pet class, so definitely check that out. And we actually sketch your pets out for you. <laughs> That's right. You should let your pet do a little painting tonight, you know? Just let them put a little paw print on there. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> Cute pets, y'all. Check out our Paint Your Pet class, and we actually have take-home kits for those. Oh, I see him. His little arms. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah, we have a cool – well, that's one of my favorite classes, actually, is our Paint Your Pet. It's awesome. You send us a picture, we sketch it on a canvas, and we teach you how to paint it. And we do have take-home kits for Paint Your Pet, which come with your pet sketched out. So if you ever want to paint your pet, check it out. It's one of my favorites. It's so fun, so satisfying. All right, so let's put some snow on those mountain peaks. Now that we've got this a little bit dry, remember it doesn't have to be 100%, just a little bit dry there. For the snow, we are going to switch it up now. And actually, let's keep using our middle brush for the most part. So let's rinse off your middle brush, whether it's a round or flat brush. Use your middle child, Slim Jim or Slim Shady. Get them clean, rinse them off good on the bottom of that cup and tap it dry. And we're gonna grab just white, just white. Now, remember, it does not have to be totally dry for this, but if you start noticing a lot of gray, you know, give it another little dry there and you'll be good to go, you'll be good to go. So, 
when you make the snow, I want you to pretend like you are skiing down that mountain. You want to feel as if you are sliding on your butt down that mountain there. So feel the curve of it. It's like a little ramp. Don't overthink it though. You got to be messy. And the hardest thing is being messy here. So what I'm going to start doing is making little messy peaks coming down from either side. So really be jittery with it. I just kind of lightly graze. So I just start over here at the peak and I start pulling little ramps, just curving down the side of that mountain. You can have little gaps as you go like that, which is really fun. And then you can have another little mountain down here if you want. Little peaks coming down, little swoops. Really feel that edge. Notice this edge doesn't have to be a perfect line. You can kind of cut back and forth. Let me get a little closer there. See that edge? I could go any way I want along that edge as long as I'm curving down the side of that mountain there. Really feel the edge of it. Make sure the lines are real choppy, real messy. Don't have to put the snow where I'm putting it. You put it wherever you want. If you're trying to add a little peak, let's say I want another little triangle in here. I could come in, add a little triangle, and then just swoop down from it, you know, add a little bit of snow coming from each side there. And this is really fun. So you can put them anywhere you want, and you can have random little patches coming down from both sides. I like to make my snow kind of concentrated more on one side than the other, but I'm putting it on both sides there. Just little swoops. The hardest thing is being weird and random with this and not making it too perfect. So make the edges real choppy, real messy, mo messy, mo better. And just pull little ramps. Remember, you gotta feel like you are sliding down a slide there. Like whoosh, feel the shape of those little peaks. Feel it. Just be one with those little mountains. You got this. You got this. Don't think about it. Just go for it. <laughs> Remember, if you catch yourself overthinking, take a deep breath or keep drinking. Whatever works for you. That's why in the studio we call our wine liquid inspiration. <laughs> Just helps you relax a little bit as you're painting it. But whatever works for you, we all work a little different. But don't worry about putting the snow exactly where I'm putting it. Just keep it messy. Remember, the messier, the better. Nature is so random. It just does what it wants. Here's some fun stuff, too. Let's say, like, I've got these little peaks over here. I've got this little guy. Let's say I want this little mountain in front of this other one. I can pull this little peak coming down further in front, like so. And then it looks like, oh, now this mountain's closer to me, and this one's a little further away. So fun little stuff you can play around with as you're going. Remember, everyone's going to be different here. No two mountains are the same. It's one thing I love about nature. It always, it always reminds us how random everything is and that there is so much beauty in randomness. If every mountain peak was exactly the same and every tree was exactly the same, it would be really dull going out to the forest, you know. But what we love about the forest is how random it is. So, you know, remember that when you're painting nature. Be random. Be weird with it. Keep it loose. Keep it weird. Just graze across that canvas or that wood palette. Don't overthink it. You got this. And there's my peaks up close. I want to show you real, real close how messy they are. Look at that. So messy. Mo messy, mo better. No perfection there. It's all about being weird. And you know, since we're just using white, you could easily take some white away with black and turn it like a gray color. Or you could use pink or purple, which is kind of fun. Let's say you want a little pink in the snow. This is optional, but if you want it, I'll show you how you can add it. I'm gonna get a little closer here. Let's say I want a little pink in my snow. I could come back with a little pink and just kind of lightly dust it at the base of my snow anywhere you want. And you can get little hints of pink if you want in some of those snowy areas. Kind of fun if you're feeling it, but it's not necessary. It's optional. Just depends on what you want. You can flavor flavor that snow however you like. You can even put a little blue at the base of your snow if you wanted, or purple, you know, or just keep it white. So really whatever you're feeling there. Just fun stuff to think about as we're playing around. Remember, you're just feeling the shape of those mountain peaks and just shaking it, shaking it while you make it. Wiggle while you work. Express yourself on those canvases. <laughs> if you have questions on the mountains, let me know. I'm going to check out the chat there. And we're almost there, y'all. We just got a little bit left. It looks like we might run over a little bit on the time tonight. But hey, we're paying from home, so no worries there. If you are on a time crunch, let me know. We don't have much left on our painting. Um, all we got left is some highlights and 
um, reflections. So actually we'll do the refle reflections first and the highlights from our trees and our mountains there. So for the rest of our painting tonight, we are gonna be using our small brush, little mama, little mama. So once you are done with those mountain peaks, bust out your little brush and say, hey, little mama. <laughs> She's gonna be working it for us for the final steps. And we don't have much left. We're gonna put some little baby trees and then we're gonna add our final reflections on here. So let's talk about those trees real quick while you're getting your final touches. The trees are really fun and they're really small, so there's not a lot to them. So I'm gonna draw a big one on here to show you. So we've got our, our mountain peaks here and we're gonna have all these little trees coming at the base of those mountain peaks. So I'll draw a big one just so you can see it, but they're gonna be really small. All you're gonna do is you're gonna make a line and like I said, this will be a lot bigger than what we're doing. And then you make a little arrow, you leave a little point and you make a little arrow. And then you gradually make your arrow get a little longer each time until it touches the base. And then bam, we've got a happy little tree. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing for our trees. They're really fun. And another way to get there, if this doesn't work for you, is again, you can start with a line. You can make a triangle, a really thin triangle, fill that in. And then you come back to that triangle and you fan it out. You just pull little curves coming out from the sides, little ramps. And this will give you a similar tree there. You gotta lift off the brush as you go. Because the more you lift off, the more your brush strokes get frayed and you get those fun, thin lines. So we're gonna make some little fluffy triangles at the base of our mountain here. But before we can even put that on there, they need a little spot to grow from. They need a little spot to grow. So what I'm gonna do for the next part is like I said, I'm gonna get my littlest brush and I'm gonna get black paint. And what you wanna do with the little brush when you load it with paint, you wanna lay it down in the paint like it's taking a little nap and you wanna roll the brush, roll it, roll it, roll it. This keeps little mama happy, keeps her from having a bad hair day. <laughs> and it evenly coats your brush with paint. So that's how you wanna load it when you're using a round brush, let it take a nap in the paint and spin it. And you can even add a little drop of water from your cup to your black paint if it's ever too thick and you can thin it out a little bit by stirring some water into it. But I wouldn't do a lot, just a little bit if you do end up adding water. Now I'll start adding my trees, but first, like I said, we gotta have a spot to grow them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right across the base of the water, I mean, the base of the mountains, where the mountains touch the water there. I'm gonna pull a little line coming across, and you don't have to go all the way across. You can go like most of the way and leave a little gap in the middle or you can go all the way. So really it's, it's up to you there. I'm gonna leave a little gap in the middle just like that. And then bam, we've got our little line. And I can start growing trees on that line. Now, if you're feeling nervous to make that line, again, deep breaths, deep breaths. Or you can flip your canvas this way and that can make it a little easier sometimes going whoosh, up and down vertical instead of horizontal. I also say, look ahead of your brush. When you're drawing, when you're outlining stuff like this, if you look a little bit ahead of your brush, it's like driving a car. It's gonna flow a little easier. But don't worry, because this line doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna add reflections underneath this line, and we're actually gonna mess this line up. Whoops. We're gonna mess this line up a bit with some of those final touches. So don't worry too much about that edge there. Doesn't have to be too perfect. The important thing is, once you've got that, you can start growing your trees. So let me get really close now because these trees are so small. They're just little babies. Okay, so now we can use our black. You can practice a few trees if you need to. Start bigger trees on the sides and smaller ones as you go in. I'm gonna just start in a random spot so you can see a little better. But remember, you make your little line and then you just come down and make a little arrow. Lift off your brush. The more you lift off, the lighter you are with your touch the more you get those nice little frayed brush strokes. And then you get these little baby trees. They're very implied, they're very small. And the idea is just to make them all a little different, just meaning don't make them all the same height. Let them run together at the bottom there. And trees are very weird, so let them just do what they wanna do there. You can overlap your snow a little if you want. And we're gonna have all these little trees down here. Now in the middle, I'll start leaving more gaps. On the sides, they'll be a little taller, a little more closer together, a little more congested so to speak. So let those 
you know, trees be friends. They want to snuggle a little bit on the sides there. <laughs> Just let them snuggle up, get to know each other. And you don't have to make them very big. You really don't. They can be very small little guys. Just little babies. Especially when you get to the middle, they might just turn into just very implied trees in the middle there. They might just be like very tiny little fluffy triangles. They don't have to have much. But again, I will make them a little taller on the edges than I do in the middle because it just kind of creates this nice little flow and kind of helps carry the eye towards that focal point, which is our big mountain there. And then it's up to you, like I said, how many you want. This is your little forest. So it's up to you. The amount of trees that live in your forest is however many you say live in your forest. Now you can see I'm starting to get into some of those really small ones. They're getting a little more spaced out now. They're getting a little more breathing room. But some of these can just be like very messy little frayed lines even when you get to the middle there. You can see how I just made some really tiny messy little frayed lines. They don't even have to be a full tree once you get to the middle. But the lighter you are with your touch, the easier of a time you're gonna have to make those frayed brush strokes. If you have a tendency to be heavy handed, hold your brush further away from you. The further it is, the easier it is to make those little bitty brush strokes. But we're just implying stuff just implying these trees are so far away in the distance, you can't see a lot of details, so don't worry about that. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's what I love about painting. You can apply so much, and you don't always have to do as much detail as you think. It's the beauty of painting. We're creating a nice illusion on a canvas tonight, or a wood palette, depending on what you chose. Just get lost in your little forest there. Just get lost. Remember to keep breathing, twisters. Kaka. Keep your oxygen flowing. Don't worry if you get it like a tree that feels a little weird. There's some weird trees in nature. There really are. No two trees are exactly the same. They really aren't. Remember like I was telling you earlier? That's the beautiful thing about nature. If every tree grew exactly the same, we'd be really bored when we went to nature, we went out to the parks, if they all were in perfect rows and they all grew exactly the same. We'd be like, man, what is this all about? This is weird. Something ain't right. So let your trees be weird. Some of them can even have a little lean to them. Some can be fluffier. Some can have um, a little more sparsity, like less branches. That's okay. And especially when they're running together like this, you know, you're really just trying to imply a little forest. That's why I wanted to have my screen really close so you can kind of see truly how messy my little trees are. There's not a lot of structure to them. And that's all the trees I'm going to have. You can have more, you can have less. That is up to you. That is up to you. Let me know if you have questions there. Otherwise, I'm going to tilt that a little bit so you can see a little better. Very good. Be one with the trees. You are those little trees, those little baby trees tonight. <laughs> you got this. Okay. They're moving and grooving now. We don't have a whole lot left on our painting tonight, honestly. There's just a little bit left. It is 8.05, so like I said, we're going a little over on the time tonight, but I just don't like to rush ya. So, and I know there's a lot of little things going on here, but take a little step back once you get your trees so you can really see the effect that you've created there with these little trees, creating that nice perspective, pushing our mountains into the distance a little bit more. Now, all we're gonna do before we put the final touches 
is we're going to have some reflections in the water and a few highlights. And that's all we have left. So we just got two little steps left. So we'll paint for another about 10 minutes or so. And remember, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube. So if you ever need more time or you want to revisit it and kind of revisit some steps, definitely feel free to check out our YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and put that on there. It's PWAT Colorado Springs. PWAT stands for painting with a twist, just so you know. <laughs> Let's see here. And we only tell you about the YouTube if you do our virtual class, because like I said, it's only going to be up for like three days before we take it down. But that way you have that little resource if you need it. All right, cool. So now we want to add our little reflections underneath our trees. This is just for your taller trees, and you're not going to do a lot of these. You'll just have like, you know, maybe like three to five of these on each side. So here's all you're going to do. Let me get close again so we can see it real close. So I'm going to go underneath a few trees here, and I'm going to make a little what I call zigzag tornado. Here, let me show you on here so we can see a little bigger. It's just going to be like this. You're going to go underneath it, and you're going to do a little zigzag like this what I call a little zigzag tornado, like a little zigzag V shape there. So that's all we want to do. And there's not a lot of these, just a few. So make them bigger on the sides and then smaller ones as you get closer to the middle. And you don't have to have a lot. Just kind of pick a few bigger trees there. These can run into each other a little bit. Just a little something, something. Don't even have to have much paint on the brush. Just enough to make it work. Don't press down hard. Just let it graze. Just caress that canvas. Sweet talking. <laughs> and that's all it is. So I've got a few on the left, I mean, the, yeah, the left side. Now I'm going to add a few on the right side. These are just a few, just some of the bigger trees. We don't want to cover up too much of that beautiful water that we just painted. Spend all that time on. So just a little something, something. Just a little something, something. And then that shows the trees reflecting a little bit on the water there. And again, just gives it a little more of that perspective, a little more depth on our painting there. And it kind of helps separate the trees from the water a little bit. Then our final highlights are gonna give us that last little bit of separation that we truly need on everything. So I'm gonna still keep my screen a little closer here so we can see it a little better for those final little touches. And it is pretty bright there. I'm going to tilt it a little bit. When we do our final highlights, that's going to really make the water pop and give it that ripply effect. So for the final step on our painting tonight, we finally made it there. All we're going to do is rinse off our littlest brush. Little mama, remember she's my dirty brush. Get her clean. Paint little circles on the bottom of that cup. And then tap it off on the side. Tap it off on your paper towel. Make sure Really make sure you got all the black paint off of there. Remember, there's sometimes some sneaky paint that hangs out at the base of the bristles where the metal meets the bristles. So you can always rinse it a second time after you wipe it off good if needed. After that, we're just going to use white paint. So remember when you load it, lay it down and roll the brush in that white. And that's the last color we're going to use, just a little white. So first off, we are just going to go throughout the entire water here. I'm going to start in the pink area, but we're going to do this everywhere. And you're going to put white horizontal lines, some longer, some shorter. Again, the hardest thing is not making a pattern because that's what our brains want to do. So be random with it. But you're going to start, you can start in the pink area here, and I'm going to start dusting it. See some lines longer, some shorter here. It's going to make my water really start to shine there and give it that little something, something. You see those really bright highlights I started adding there? You'll be, able to, you'll be able to really see them good in the darker parts of the water because they're going to be everywhere. So once you get some of the pink areas, start bringing some out here. Don't press down hard. Just dust it. Kind of like pull your brush away from the canvas as you go. That's going to really help. But this is going to give our water a wonderful little shine down here, a little shimmer, a little something, something that it needs. So again, try to make your lines spaced weird, some closer together, some further, some longer, some shorter, because our brains naturally want to put these in a perfect little rows. But you can see how that's going to give that water a sweet little shine there. So that's the idea. You can make it rain or just do a couple. That's up to you. But don't press down hard. And as long as you've got enough paint on there, it's going to do the work for you.
Now, again, if you feel like it's too bold and you want to blend it in, um, you could take a clean brush, a bigger brush, and dust it, but I wouldn't do too much of that because, again, you kind of want it bold. You can see how bold mine is. It really adds a cool shine to that water there. The last thing we want to do is put a little bit of this highlight at the base of the mountains. So we want to cut in front of those reflections we added. So once you put them down here, the very, very final step is going to be right in between your trees and the reflections of those trees. Now, when you do this line, leave little gaps. Don't make it a perfect solid line. Little gaps, you can have a little movement, that's okay. And this little white is just gonna really help separate that reflection. And now it's got that nice shimmer. It's kind of the water crashing against the edge of the bank there in the distance. So that little bit of line right at the base of the trees there, overlapping in front of those reflections, is gonna really add a nice shimmer. And you can even add more lines if you want in front of those reflections. But that is gonna be the final touch on our painting tonight. Once you are done, don't be afraid to sign it. I like to sign the corner. That's a, always a good spot. You can sign it with white there. I'll put my initials down here. I usually just initial it, my TD for Tyler the Paint Doctor. <laughs> Actually, my last name is Dixon, so that works really well for me. Paint Doctor or Dixon, all right. And then once you sign that beauty, you have officially completed your painting. So give yourselves a hand, twisters. Woo! Your canvas or wood palette is no longer stark white and boring. You brought that surface to life. You gave it its own little personality. Now your surface is feeling fabulous. It's feeling brilliant. You'll have to think of a nice little spot to hang your beauty. And again, I would love to see your paintings. So if you take a little snapshot and you post it somewhere, definitely tell us about it. Tag us. Remember, we are Twist Colorado Springs, and or you can do hashtag twist at home. I also put my Instagram on there. Oh, that looks great, Brittany. Beautiful. That is fantastic. Well done. I love that sky. Let me know if you have questions, y'all. And I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes as we're finishing up those final little touches. And um, remember, we're going to do more of these Zoom classes. So if you are addicted, because it is highly addictive, I'm warning you. <laughs> it's a good, healthy addiction, though. If you get hooked, definitely check out more of our classes. And we've got supplies. So don't worry about running. class. We've got a lot of good ones coming up, so do check out the calendar. Let me know if you have questions on those final touches, my twisters. Oh, Donna, that looks awesome. Beautiful. I love those mountain peaks. Really nice. And again, everyone, if you had a good time tonight, remember my name is Tyler the Paint Doctor. Otherwise, my name is Bert, and I was not here at all. <laughs> Just, but feel free to leave me a little shout out on Facebook, Google, anything that you give me a personal shout out on helps me out actually a lot. So I'd really appreciate it. You are amazing. Hope your weekend is great. Thank you, Brittany. I hope you have an awesome weekend as well. Thank y'all for painting with me. Y'all are so fun. Love the tie-dye shirts, by the way. Those are sweet. Yeah. Bye, Williams family. Thanks for painting with me. Oh, that looks awesome. I hope I'm saying this right. The Heesackers, beautiful. Love it. That sky is awesome. Those mountains look epic. Well done. Well done, my friend. Man, y'all did awesome. I hope to see these online later. Thank you, Williams family. Pure coincidence. <laughs>
The tie-dye? Oh, that y'all both wore tie-dye? <laughs> That's perfect. Great minds think alike, you know? <laughs> That's how it goes. Thanks again, everyone. I'll hang out for a few more minutes and then I'll be closing up shop here. But I hope you all paint with me again sometime. Like I said, I'll be doing more virtual classes. And if you are looking for me specifically, when you sign up, it'll say Tyler the Paint Doctor when you sign up. So it should tell you who's instructing. Otherwise, you can always give us a call if they haven't put an instructor on yet to confirm because I love painting with y'all. So if you want to paint with me, again i would love to see you again but again remember uh we do have the take home kits as well and in studio classes we're starting to do as well so check it out y'all we're gonna keep that art coming to you no matter what's going on <laughs> oh that looks beautiful donya beautiful really nice man y'all did so good i'm impressed y'all made me look good tonight <laughs> y'all made me look real good Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions, my friends. So I am gonna go ahead and close up shop for the evening. I had a fantastic time painting with everyone. I hope y'all had a blast as well. And like I said, I hope I see you next time. Again, if you're looking for us, we are the Painting with a Twist located off of North Powers and Const. I hope I see you next time. Again, if you're looking for us, we are the Painting with a Twist located off of North Powers and Constitution. We are the East Colorado Springs Studio, or you can find us at hashtag Twist Colorado Springs or at Twist Colorado Springs. We also are connected to the Lakewood Studio as well. So if you're looking for kits, check out both of those studios and we would love to hook you up. Otherwise, thank y'all so much for painting with me tonight. Y'all have a lovely evening and I will see you next time, my painters. Take it easy, everybody.